Hello, everybody. I'm just letting everybody in. So, I hope you've got a pen and paper. There's going to be lots to cover off today. Thank you so much for joining me. Super excited to get started. And I would love, just as we are, before we jump in, where are we? I would love just before we jump in that you share with me in the chat box where you currently feel your visibility is at right now, right? So do you feel that your visibility between a zero, sorry, from a one to a five? So one being I'm not visible at all in my business at all. And five being I'm absolutely visible. Like everybody knows what I do, who I am and how I'm showing up is really, really consistent. So just share with me in the chat box where you feel you're at. Okay, so one for two is cool, so this will be really good. Just going to keep checking. Make sure everyone's jumping in okay. Three, amazing. Okay, cool. So today is going to be super fun. We are going to be exploring being seen, getting over the fear of being seen and visibility, increasing your, your visibility. If you want to take things to the next level next year, more people need to know who you are and what you do. Otherwise, if you keep speaking the same stuff to the same people, you can only go so far, right? So I think it's really important that we start to consider if we were to go to the next level, what would that look like? In visibility wise, what would that look like? And what comes up when we think about these things? So. Um, who just jumped in just then? Lulu, if you want to pop in the chat box, can you let me know where you're at between a one to a five with your visibility? One being I'm not showing up at all. Five being I'm 100% visible. I'm consistent. People know who I am and what I do. I'd love for you to pop that in the chat box and we will get started. Amazing. Alrighty, so Today's session, as I said, really important that we make the time to really work on your business. So there's going to be a lot of information. I'm going to go fast because I like to smash in as much information as possible in the 30 minutes. And then afterwards, we'll be doing Q&A and some live coaching. So if you have any challenges when it comes to being seen or your visibility and your strategy around your visibility, then we'll talk about that towards the end. So feel free to you know, write down any um Write down any questions that you have as we go, and then I'm going to open up open up the floor. Now you can pop the questions in the chat box as, you, as as we go, or you can hold them to the end, and we'll do that at the end. So working on your business is the way to take yourself to the next level. If you want to be in a space where you are hitting goals, then you need to have focus on those. If you are wanting to increase your visibility, there's going to have to be proactive work in creating that. It's not going to happen for you. It's not something that you know just happens. But you don't. People don't increase their visibility without an intention behind it. So working on your business today, especially is gonna be super valuable for you. And so please remove any distractions because where your focus goes, your energy flows. So today is all about being seen and visibility. So what we're gonna cover off is the fear of being seen, obviously, so we can actually start to show up more com with more confidence. We are going to explore self-promotion that's how we actually get seen. We need to be promoting ourselves. We're going to be exploring comparison, judgment and rejection and then becoming the go to person and what that self promotion piece is going to look like for 2022 for you. So for those of you, I mean, everyone on here pretty much knows me now. I know that a few of you jumped on last week and I've got a few uh, people on here that I work with. So that's amazing. And so for those of you who don't know me or what I do, I work with high performing women to help them stop sabotaging them, their successes, as well as help them step into their own worth and their leadership so they can skyrocket their business. I love working with women who want to make an impact and want to have want to create freedom in their businesses. And I feel like those who want to are here to make a difference will. And if you you know, if that's a really high value of yours, making a difference and making an impact, then really allowing that to drive you is a really good way to challenge you to step into rooms that you feel uncomfortable right now, but that will grow and expand your visibility. So my first question is, if you don't share your greatness, who will? This really hit me. I remember when I first read this quote a long time ago and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to like I had such fear when it came to showing up on video that I started my podcast first 
because I was like, I can hide behind the computer. I can just get a microphone and just talk because I'm really good at talking. And that's my thing, right? That can be my thing. And so I started my podcast first before I thought I even wanted to jump into video. I had so much fear around it. I had so much fear around the judgment, around people judging me for my weight. I really had a lot of fears and belief systems around, well, I can't be a speaker on stage unless I lose 20 kilos. Like I had all these fears and doubts. And when it came to it, I was like, well, if I don't do it, who will? Right? If no one's going to do it for me, no one's coming to save me, no one's coming to create my marketing plan for me. If I want to get my message out and I want to communicate to the world how I can help them, then that's that's on me. So I feel like something sometimes it's you need to hear at some point that your intention that you put behind it and the way that you challenge your beliefs, because your belief systems is just your programming. It's past stuff. It doesn't necessarily need to continue on into your future unless you allow it. Awesome. So super important that you can take as many notes as you like, screenshot whatever you need to do in order to, to get the most out of today's session. So we're going to dive straight into being seen. Do you have a fear around being seen? Many of us have a fear around being seen. I definitely had. I had a fear around judgment and rejection and I would hide and play small. Obviously what I just talked about with my podcast. And when you work through understanding where this comes from, you can overcome it. So majority of our fears around being seen can often come from our programming from past experiences, or sometimes it comes from a really simple little thing that was said to you at some point in your childhood that you held on to and you developed evidence and proof to prove that to be true. This is what we do with belief systems. We create a belief system in our childhood and then we go out into the world and experiences happen and they prove that belief to be true, right? And so it's often that fear of being seen can stem from having a belief system that it's not safe to be me, right? If you've had been brought up in a household where there was a belief system about children were to be seen and not heard, that was a big one in my child in my household. And so when we have those fears and doubts and, or the other one, actually, the other belief system is often that it's, it's not, it's, I don't deserve the attention, right? I don't, don't deserve the attention or the success that I'm looking for. And so that can actually often be another one as well. So when we then get it, we feel like we don't deserve it and we end up sabotaging it. So what we want to do is actually look at what are some of the underlying conditioning that we have, we have, and we want to question it and figure out why that's holding us back still and challenge it because we are not that little girl anymore, right? And for whatever the situation was, it may have been something that was flippantly said in the household. It may have been a comment that was said by someone in, of authority in our lives and we took it on board as truth. But what we want to do is actually poke holes in that belief system and go, hang on a minute, that does not have to be true. Yeah. Ultimately, deep down, we want to be fully accepted and loved as our true, authentic selves. We want to be constantly putting ourselves out authentically and being accepted. But to get to that level, you've got to accept all of you first. You've got to love, you know, or even just like, right? You could just like yourself just to begin with. You've got to love your uniqueness, your weirdness, your quirks, all parts of you and fully accept you first in order for others to accept you. If we're always looking at an externally of ourselves to be accepted, we will always be wanting more. Whereas if we start firstly within by accepting ourselves, we're more likely to easily like small in small steps, be challenging our ways in the way that we show up to build new evidence to prove that it is safe to be us. It is safe to show up. It is safe to be seen. So we share this in ways of like, being vulnerable, right? Starting really small by sharing things with people that we trust and love that know have our best interest at heart to be able to build that evidence to go, it's okay, it's safe for me to share this, right? It's safe for me to be me. There is nothing more rare nor more beautiful than a woman being unapologetically herself, comfortable in her perfect imperfection. To me, that is true essence of beauty. I love this quote. Because when we are truly authentically ourselves, it is so freaking like liberating to be like, I do not care what other people think because I like me. And if you don't like me, then that's cool. That must be stuff that you've got going on. And maybe we're not meant to be connected in this lifetime. And that's totally okay. But what's more important is that I like myself. Yeah. Now, when we do this level of work and work on building our self-worth and our self-trust, we can reframe comparison in a whole other level. So actually, I want to just 
talk about this first. So when we're able to accept ourselves fully, we can get to a level where we stop giving a shit what other people think of us. Yeah, that's when you can show up unapologetically. It's when other people's opinions are less important than our opinion of ourself. So I want you to think about how you can raise your opinion of yourself. And the way that we do that is with anything we create, with anything we say to ourselves, with anything that we do, we ask our own opinion first. And this can be really challenging for people pleasers. This can be really challenging for people who have always put other people first before their needs. And, but it's not impossible at all. You can absolutely build up this practice of going, do I like this? Am I happy with this? Yeah. Or do I want to do this, right? Or when someone says, oh, where do you want to go for dinner? And then some, and you're like, oh, I don't know, wherever you want to go. Instead of doing that, actually stopping and going, actually, what do I want to eat tonight? Or what do I, where do I want to go? Starting to acknowledge yourself first and asking your own opinion is a beautiful way to start to build that self-worth and that self-trust. So then when you're going out and other people's opinions then come into play, you can acknowledge what you mean to you, yeah? We want to choose also where we receive feedback from in, in the business world. It can be really challenging, especially if we're trying to grow that we're, where we're receiving feedback from. So we want to be, have that strong sense of self so we can be open to the feedback because it's the best way that we learn. And when we learn to receive feedback in a place that it does not affect who you are as a person, has no reflection on your self-worth, you can start to then go, okay, this is totally okay for me to receive this information and I get to choose what I want to do with it. If you haven't watched the Netflix series, Brene Brown's Call to Courage, I absolutely suggest you go and watch it. It's an incredible, uh, it's like an hour speech. It's incredible in the way that she talks about being in the arena and making sure that you're conscious of who you're receiving feedback from. So the way that I look at this, I have five friends, family and friends that I look to for advice that I know have my best interest at heart, that I know that want the best for me, they want me to win. And they really consider things like give me constructive criticism. So I look to them for feedback. Then I look at, are they in the arena? Is this person who I'm giving feedback, who's giving me feedback, are they in the arena? Are they constantly putting themselves out there? Are they challenging themselves? Are they, do they have a business that is you know, better than mine? Do they, are they succeeding at a level that I haven't succeeded yet, right? Are they a role model that I want to look up to? And if they're not, then I choose not to take that feedback on board right? Because people love to give their opinions, <laughs> but you get to choose whether you want to take them on board or not. Okay. And the last thing here is like decide from a place of regret, not fear. And what I mean by that is that if we take on board other people's opinions and we don't take action on something that we feel called to take action on, or we want to do, but we do it out of a place of fear, you are the one that's going to regret that, not them, right? They're going to still have their fear and they're going to give you their opinion and they're like, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that because, you know, you might, you might get judged or you might get rejected or that could be risky, right? But if in your heart you desperately want to do that and that's something that's on your heart to do, it's given to you for a reason, not that other person that's giving you their opinion. So you need to decide, am I going to regret not doing this and then go all in? Yeah. And this is what I had to then decide for myself. Like, yeah, video is freaking scary, but how am I going to get to that level of, of success that I want? When I think about the role models that I want to, uh, that aspire to, I see that they're constantly doing video constantly. Right. And even though like I've built a really great successful business that I love, I does, doesn't mean I don't have other, any further goals that I want to uh, aspire to, which I absolutely do. And I look at people further ahead of me and I go, how are they doing so much video <laughs> when I'm so busy? <laughs> like, how do I even find time? But they must be much busier, but they're still doing it. So I always look at that as an opportunity to learn and be kind on how I'm comparing myself because obviously we want to be conscious of how we manage our time. But when it comes to comparison, this is the way that I look at it. Successful people admire and learn from those. We don't downgrade ourselves thinking we're not good enough because we're not them. We're unique. We're different. This is what I mean by really acknowledging your uniqueness and, and, and building that strong sense of self. And the way that I look at comparison are these core pieces. One, let's drop them from the pedestal that we're holding them on. If you are comparing yourself to someone else that's further along, along than you, that has been in it forever, that has been creating content much longer than you, and you're like, well, oh, I can't be that confident on video, or I don't know how I'm going to be able to be interviewed on podcasts because that's just not, you know, I'm not really good at that. They didn't start being excellent at it, right? And I think that when we get stuck on that, we put them on this pedestal 
we make them this superhuman person and go, well, I couldn't be that person. But if we drop them back down to our level, they are a human being the way that we are a human being. They have something to add to the and contribute to the conversation. And so do I. Yeah. And when we do that and we'll acknowledge that, hey, they maybe suck at other things that maybe I don't suck at. And we want to learn from them. We want to celebrate them, learn from them and go, well, how did they get good at this? How did they get good at this? They must have gone out and like I was on a mastermind this morning with some of my mentors and they were talking about how when they first sold their first mastermind in um, what they said they've been doing it six years when they first sold their mastermind, the guy who the first he first started it before he, in, um, he, they did it as a partnership, he went and did three masterclasses or webinars each week for five weeks straight, same webinar every single week, three times a week to book out and sell out that mastermind. Right. Because he was like, well, I've got to get this message out. I'm going to do this as many times as I need to do it. And I was like, wow, I hadn't even considered that. Like, how are we looking at and comparing ourselves to other people and going, well, it's easy for them because they've got audience. Nah, man, they've built that. They have absolutely built that. And then the last piece is how do we challenge ourselves to embody the quality that we see in that other person? So you're looking to that other person that you're comparing yourself to. There's something within them that you have within you. Otherwise, you would not be able to recognize it. It would be impossible. Your brain would be like, I don't understand what that is, right? So we are noticing that they have something that we need or we want to embody or we see something, we see their confidence or we see their tenacity or we see their ability to you know, speak really clearly or whatever it is. And we go, oh, I want that. So we acknowledge it. We celebrate them. We learn from them and start to embody it as best you can. Awesome, Tanya. That's good. Share those light bulb moments. So what specifically? Share it. The more you share it, the more you acknowledge it. Amazing. And then the last piece here is stepping into an abundant mindset when it comes to comparison. Their success is a representation of what's possible for me. That's why it's being shown to you. If you're seeing other people successful and you're like, oh, okay, this is something that I really want and I can see that they've, they've created this, that's a representation that it's possible for you. Not that it's a crowded market, not that it's like, oh, well, they can do it, but it doesn't mean I can't. No, no, no. It's a representation that the universe is going, this is on its way to you. Yes. Awesome, Tanya. So they have what I want and it's in me. It's already within me. Amazing. All right. And the last little piece here before we jump into the visibility stuff is judgment and rejection. Two of those icky bleh, things that we don't love. Um, all good, Lily. Thank you. Um, so one of the biggest things that you need to acknowledge, and I, this comes from my experience of like, con I was in a sales role before I jumped into my business and I had to put myself out daily to be rejected every single day, making sales or approaching businesses that I wanted to get on board as clients every single day, cold, so cold. And what I built was this resilience to recognize that the judgment isn't or the rejection isn't about me. It's never about me. It might be the wrong time, might be the wrong fit product, it might be the wrong fit service. It might be that, you know, they've got 15 million other things on their mind and they're already really busy and there's so many other things. Like all the rejection, if you make it mean and it's about you, it'll always cause you to lower your self-worth. It'll cause you to think that you're not good enough. And that's never the case. Never the case. You were born worthy. It's never about you. So the core things that we want to consider is we judge because we're human. And, and the reason why we fear it is because we recognize that we do it for others, right? So we know that it's being done to us. Whereas it's a normal part of our brain's function in order to keep us safe. And judgment can come across as a life-threatening feeling because in light, in, we, we don't have life or death experiences now, right? We're not, and our brain is very primitive and the emotional response is where we're like, oh, are we in danger here? Are we a threat? And judgment feels really real. And so what we want to do is we want to reframe what the judgment means and recognize that it's not about us, but we can absolutely learn from it and know that a no in, in a sales situation isn't necessarily always a no later on down the track, right? It just means not now. Well, this isn't the right fit for me. And there's always ways you can move with that within your business, okay? Or that might be the wrong fit for you and it's the universe's way of redirecting you to something else. So what are the scenarios my brain is currently using to keep me safe from playing small and not be more visible, right? 
I want you to explore what this is for you. So what's currently stopping you? What do you fear the most when it comes to visibility? And I'd love you to either pop it in the chat box or write it down. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it in the chat, I want you to write it down because we're going to take this through a process. What do you fear the most? So when it comes to being more visible, what are you most worried about happening? Is it being judged? Is it being rejected? What are you most worried about happening? And if it is one of those, I want you to really play out the whole movie. So like, get really specific. Like I'm judged about this person saying this about me, or I'm worried that if I get rejected or it actually works and then I am pu very public and very visible and then I lose it all, right? Like what is the actual underlying fear? So Shireen said, wasting my time and energy by it not working. Interesting. So then keep playing that out even further, Shireen. So then if it didn't work, what would happen? What are you worried about happening? So Mel said, what I have to share is not good enough or won't help people. And so take it even further, play out the whole movie. What specifically would happen that you would know that to be true? Because that will often play in our minds of like, oh, I'm not good enough. But then that further down the track, it's like, well, if I do put my stuff out there, then what? What if it doesn't help people? Then what? So what I want you to do is take this through the fear analysis is go, let's imagine that it did happen, right? Shireen, you wasted your time. How much time would you waste, right? What if, what if that was the case? What if someone found that it wasn't good enough? What if someone said, oh, this didn't help me? How would you handle that situation? Like really think about it, write it down. How would you handle it? Because what's always interesting is that these fears, they play in our minds because they're undefined. They're like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, this won't work. What if I waste my time? But what if, you know, like all the what ifs. But if you continue to play out the movie and actually go, well, what if it did happen? Like I was on a call the other day and I was here listening to the speaker and she was talking about, um, Kathy Heller is her name and she's in, has an incredible podcast called Don't Keep Your Day Job. And she spoke all about what if you went out there and literally acted as if you had already publicly failed. What if you acted as if you had already publicly failed? Then what would you do? Would you just keep going? <laughs> would you like maybe cry about it a little bit, but then you'd move on? <laughs> right? Like I think the thing is that the big, the thing, big thing that you're worried about happening, it may hurt or it may be painful at the time, but you'll move past it. You'd get over it. And if this is really important to you and it's what you're creating with your business is aligned to your values and you love it, then you will absolutely move through it and move past it. So now when you think about, well, how would I handle that? And then how would I prevent it from happening? How do you feel about that fear now? So like, what if you did waste a bit of time, Shireen? Like, is it that bad? <laughs> right? <laughs> Love it. Okay. If you have any questions, jump in the chat. I'm going to keep moving. So an undefined fear will always hold power over you to find the fear, get as clear on it as you can to overcome it and then watch it dissipate. i uh, sorry. I was reading Mel's message. So she, her fear was what if I share it and it's not good enough or won't help people deep down. I know it will help. So I would keep going. Absolutely. Right. You're like, well, if it's not helping this person, then they may be the wrong fit. So I'm going to sort of keep finding other people until I find the right fit. It'll, the right people will get the transformation that I'm looking to create. Awesome. So let's step into visibility. How do we become the go-to person in an industry? First thing you want to ask yourself is what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for? This needs to be something that you can talk about until the cows come home and to your blue in the face that you're so freaking passionate about it that you can talk, to, you'll talk to anybody about it, right? Like, you know, even if you were like homeless on a bus stop and someone sat down and was like, 
tell me what you're passionate about, you would still be talking about it, right? Like you need to be super passionate about it. The reason for this is because the clearer you can be on what you want to be known for, it makes it easier for other people to recommend you. And that's how you become the go-to person, right? When someone's like, Hey, I'm really struggling. Like this actually happened a couple of uh, last week where um, someone reached out to me and she was like, I was chatting to this girl and she knows you. And she said, I was telling her all the challenges that I'm going through in my business. And she said, they're all mindset stuff. You need to go see Christine. Like this is exactly what she's going to help you with. She was so clear because I've had so many conversations with her. She follows me on socials. She's seen me run masterclasses before because I knew who it was that, she, that referred me. And she knew, she's like, you need to see Christine, right? That's how you get super clear and become the go-to person by talking about what you're passionate about. And I'm gonna share with you how you do that. So someone else can easily explain. You need to put words in their mouth. Easily explain what you do and how to recommend you. So no one is gonna do it for you. You will have to show up until your dream clients do, right? You've gotta show up until they go, yes, this is what I need and you are top of mind. This is why I believe consistency is super important. And for me, yes, consistency has worked. And look, you've got to work what, what works best for you. But when it comes to the way that our brain develops trust and it comes through visibility, and this is the hard thing, like someone could be a fucking amazing marketer, but be shit at what they do, but they will still win. Because if they're being seen and people know who they are and what they do, they're so top of mind that they'll go, oh, that's right, I can work with that person. Who knows whether they're good or not, right? So. All you need to do is work on your visibility in order to have more of your dream clients coming your way. Now, you need to work on how good you are at what you do. Obviously, I advocate you be good at what you do. <laughs> um, but be mindful that, you know, sometimes it's just about getting good at promoting yourself. So a couple of questions I want you to consider when it comes to the way that you're showing up currently is how often are you selling? Are you making offers? Are you making offers? Because I see this it either goes one way or the other. Either we're selling all the time and not serving enough or we're serving, 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 and never creating offers for people to say yes to, right? Like this, like jumping on a masterclass like this, this is an offer to come and spend more time with me. Before someone is gonna invest money in you, they're gonna invest time with you. So how are you allowing that to happen? How are you getting them involved and, and getting them um, open to seeing more of what it is that you do? So how and when do you currently make offers for your people? You can screenshot this if you need to. Are you engaging your audience, your network to spend more time with you? And if they're not willing to invest their time with you, they won't invest their money, right? So think about how you're increasing your self-promotion. And I know the sales piece, I'm gonna to talk to that in just a second. But I want you to think about how you create omnipresence. Before we even think about the sales piece, I want you to think about how you become omnipresent. So omnipresent is a term used that describes how you're, it almost looks like you're being seen everywhere, right? Like. People are going from different social media networks to other groups of people to, you know, whether they're Googling things, like they're seeing you everywhere. And it's not necessarily that you are everywhere, but it just seems like that, right? When you're, this is what consistency creates. Now, I know that I like to show up pretty much on stories every single day, right? Because it pops up in, in someone's feed on top of Instagram. And if they're regular there, they, they, they click on it and they can see what I'm doing or what I'm talking about that day, right? When you're showing up consistently, people become familiar with you. They are often most connected to what it is that you do. So they will build trust and likability. And then when they are at a stage in their business or their life where they need your service, you're top of mind. So I want you to think about how you can create omnipresence. So I'm going to challenge you here to create a 90 day focus for the first three quarters, for the first quarter of the year for 2022. I want you to choose two topics or problems that you solve in your niche and spend 90 days speaking only on this and see what happens. And I know this may seem like, oh my God, I'm gonna be so repetitive, but when you're so super clear on those two topics, you'd be surprised at how well you can flesh them out in different ways, right? Talking about them to them and, and against them. You're agreeing and disagreeing. You're exploring them in such depth that people are like, oh, I know exactly what she's talking about. I know exactly what she is all about, right? You have to be sick of talking about it to be, to be clear enough that they know because they're not going to see all of it, right? They're not absolutely going to see all of it. And then I want you to think about how you can be omnipresent across all the platforms that you use. So I focus most of my attention on Instagram, right? So I show up majority on Instagram, but I have my same profile name and picture across all platforms and I share content, but less regularly on those, right? I have my Instagram stuff go across to Facebook so that I'm present there as well. 
But other than that, the most consistency I have with there and there again is my podcast. So I'm choosing where I'm showing up most. My podcast and Instagram is pretty much my, my pro, uh, platforms of choice and I'm showing up there really consistently and everything else is kind of just sitting in the background, but just is content that I've already created that gets fleshed across, right? So I'm creating omnipresence across all platforms from LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, podcasting, all of the things. So the next piece here, I'm actually, I'm probably added way too much into this, this one today. I'm already at 1230, goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna slam through the last couple. So become the aspiration is the next piece of like, what does your dream client want from you? Or not, not from you necessarily, but what do they want? Like what's their ultimate value? What do they value in life? Like I know that my clients love, they want freedom and they wanna make an impact. Like that's two of the main values that I, that I work with with my clients. So I think about how can I embody this more? How can I be the aspiration? And what, do you, what you currently are putting out is what you're getting back. So I want you to be really conscious of that as well. Your language and your energy is gonna attract your tribe. So I really want you to consider that because if you are putting out language that is in victim language, you will attract victim clients. If you're putting out language that is about going to the next level, you will attract clients who wanna to go to the next level. So it's just considering what you're putting out is what you're getting back, right? It's really fascinating when you do this from this perspective of having that objective view of what you're currently putting out there and going, oh, I can see now why I'm not getting back what I want because I'm putting this stuff out. The next thing is getting to a point where you believe in the value that you bring. So when you're promoting yourself, people wanna feel your certainty and they wanna feel the belief that what you offer is valuable. So you may need to practice this, right? So you may need to practice your offer, you may need to practice speaking about it, getting on video and talking about it by getting super clear on the value that you bring. So if you haven't done any of these, I would suggest you go and do it with past clients get the feedback, get the testimonials, ask what the long-term impact has been. So if you haven't worked with them in a year, go back and ask them, where are they at now? What results have furthered on from the work that you've done with them? Think about the results you achieve. And even you can do this yourself. You can go, well, this is the result I achieve. Now, if I go 10 years down the track, how has that impacted all areas of their life? So you can start to get a clear picture on how your changes, your transformation that you've created for them has impacted them in many ways. And if your brain is like, oh, it's not really gonna have that big of an impact, I want you to challenge that because I guarantee you it will. You just haven't considered it from that perspective yet. And I want you to then ask yourself, how does your audience know that you can achieve these results? Are you sharing testimonials? Are you sharing case studies? Are you sharing how, like, how your client went from A to B, right? If you're not doing, this is what I mean by self-promotion. You've gotta be unapologetically showing up and going, this is how I can serve you. This is the offer that I have for you. This is, you know, this is where I can take you from A to B. Getting comfortable with sales. Sales is a skill, guys. If you've never learned it, you may need to study it because it's something that you need to get good at and master in, in business. Coming from a place of understanding that sales is service rather than salesy or um, manipulative is where you then stay in your place of service. If you are here coming from a place of like, they have the problem, I really have empathy for the problem they're experiencing and I wanna help them, you will stay in a place of service rather than and actually selling. This is where your integrity comes into play, guys. So recognizing that you have you currently have value that you can add to your audience. Are you serving them? Are you holding back for fear of whatever, of being salesy and instead of going, actually, if you've got this problem, I can absolutely help you. So I want you to think about this. Are you stuck in a, in a stage of selling too much, the way that you're selling to your network or your socials or not selling at all? So then you need to focus on sales. Or are you currently, sorry, selling too much and not adding value? So that's where you need to add lots more value. So go all in with the value. So you, this is where you could be promoting yourself on, um, okay, so Mel said she's not selling at all. So this is where we need to start thinking about what are some of the offers that you can put out and create some irresistible offers that make them go, I really wanna work with Mel, right? Case studies, testimonials, like start focusing on how you're sharing the work that you create and start selling. Then if you're stuck in that place of selling and you're not serving, think about how you can increase your visibility through self-promotion. This is where I would suggest doing a podcast tour. Think about the topics that you could be interviewed on that are relevant to your business and the transformation you create and go get yourself booked on 40 podcasts in the next 90 days. Right? That's what's gonna change the whole trajectory of your business. If you're being seen and you're speaking about, like if you don't wanna be seen on video, start with your podcasts. 
It could be doing Facebook Lives, going, I'm going to set, set a consistency goal and go, I'm going to be showing up on a, on a Facebook Live every two days for the next, what, 90 days or whatever, right? Obviously, you choose what that is, whether it's once a week. I did that last, last year where I was like, I'm not doing, haven't done any lives for such a long time. I'm going to do one a week every week. And it really did actually help increase my visibility. Are you creating short term or long term, short form or long form content? What I mean by that is if you're only creating short form content, what I mean by that is just posts on socials, you're not actually solving much of a problem for your client, right? Because you're just talking about one core little thing and you can only do so much in a post. Whereas if you're creating long form content, like masterclasses like this, like blog posts, like podcast episodes, podcast interviews, longer form videos, that you're actually solving a problem with your client, that's how you're asking them to spend more time with you. They're seeing the value that you create and go, well, if I'm getting this for free, then how I, yeah, I want to work with her, right? Like you're stepping up to that next level. Choose a vis visibility goal is the last little piece here today. So I want you to think about what visibility do you want to achieve in the first three months of the year? So we're going to stick with 90 days. What's your visibility goal? So that could be showing up consistently and really get super clear on what that is. It could be creating some masterclasses. It could be, you know, jumping on some podcast tours. It could be uh, doing some Facebook lives, some collaborations, some joint lives. There's so many ways that you can do it, but I want you to think about how, what's your visibility goal. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take that visibility goal and go, I'm going to times it by 10, not for the purpose of actually achieving that goal, right? This is just to uncover some really epic action steps that you could take in order to achieve that. So if I go, well, I want to be booked on 40 podcasts in the first 90 days of the year. I want to get super clear on what my message is going to be. I need to go find those podcasts. I'm probably going to approach 80 podcasts to hundred podcasts to get on 40, right? So that's where my action step comes into play. Or maybe when it comes to your visibility, I want to go, well, I'm going to actually approach, I'm going to do some PR. So I'm going to create 10 articles a month and I'm going to put them out to publications throughout the month. So I'm going to do 30 over those three months and see what exposure I can get there. Yeah. So often what we do is we play small based on what we think we are comfortable with now. But by doing this, you're challenging yourself in whole new levels that you're going to get so good at it that you actually go, well, this is easier. And um, once I've done it, because action always trumps more research, taking that action is where you're going to get the confidence. Taking that action is where you're going to get the belief in yourself in order to do it again and again and again. So when I started doing video, I knew I was going to suck. I knew I was going to suck in the beginning, but I knew that if I was going to get good at it, I'm going to have to do a lot more of it. So I challenged myself. And this is where you get to decide for yourself because you run your business, nobody else. You get to decide how quick you go. So you can decide, well, I'll, I'll do one Facebook Live a month and that means I'm going to do 12 over the year. And it's like, cool, how many people are actually going to see that? Where I could go, I'm going to do 10 a month because I'm going to freaking smash it and I'm going to increase my visibility by 10 times each month rather than once. Make sense? You get to decide that. And I want you to take this with you. Be so good, they can't ignore you. When you're showing up consistently and you're going all in and you're sharing your expertise, people want to be around you. People want to see what you're doing. People want to learn from you. This is how you create that next level of visibility. This is where you then get asked to be part of other people's groups. Like one, one focus for myself with this year was actually to get booked to doing masterclasses for other groups of women so I can get in front of more audiences, right? I actively went out looking for that. And now I get approached to do it more because I'm actively doing it and people are seeing me do it. So often we can think, well, oh, I don't get those offers. They don't happen. You have to go out and get them. Mm, sorry, my throat's all dry. So look, sorry, I'm just going to cough. Excuse me. Okay, so we are going to go to some Q&A. So get your questions ready. I know that was a lot to cover. <laughs> I'm going to send out a recording so you can watch again if you need to. I'm going to open up the floor. So if you want to pop your mic on and ask a question, feel free. Next week, we're going to be diving into worthiness and money. So if you want to earn more, you've got to increase your level of self-worth in order to achieve that level of success. And we're going to be talking about, you know, over delivering and under charging so that you can have the freedom business that you desire. Worthiness and money is one of my favorite topics. So excited for next week as well. 
So share with me any questions that you have in the chat or jump, throw on your mic and ask away.